Are cheap wedges worth it? In today's video, we're gonna find out. So with golf club prices rising and rising and rising and everything becoming more expensive, we might used to pay around about £100 for a premium wedge. We're now looking into the £150 mark for a premium wedge. Your Callaways, your Titleist, your Mizuno, your TaylorMades, all up at that price point. So it is a significant height. And a lot of new golfers are coming to the sport and maybe that isn't the budget that they had in mind for just one single wedge. And bear in mind, you're gonna be buying three wedges most likely when you do buy a new set of wedges so cheap wedges are probably going to be an alternative but are they worth it I hopped onto Amazon and I have bought these three wedges here they come in a set of three they are the Texan classic wedges now they cost me 49 pounds and 99 pence which is about 69 dollars from my American friends a couple of pounds shipping Lo and behold, I had the wedges delivered to me. Nice looking box, and there we go. We've got three wedges for the price of 50 pounds. That's the third of one premium wedge. Just get that in your mind. You've got three wedges for the price of one third of a premium wedge. But the big question is, are they gonna perform like a premium wedge? Are they actually any good? So the first thing that I wanted to do was actually just take them down to the golf course. I wanted to head out onto the practice green at Warrington Golf Club and just have a little bit of a play around with them. I wanted to know what they felt like, what they sounded like, how they performed before I would look at the, the facts about these golf clubs. And also I wanted to leave any judgment out of my mind before I did it because what I do in this video in a little bit, I wanna list a few benefits and a few negatives of buying maybe a premium wedge versus a, a cheaper set of wedges. Then I'm gonna put them to the test against a premium wedge as well. So I headed out to the golf course just to get this initial feeling, like I say, without any judgment in my So initial thoughts and a little bit about the golf clubs before I get into the benefits and the negatives of these golf clubs. So they come in this three set, you get a 52 degree, you get a 56 degree and you get a 60 degree. They all come with bounce angles provided as well. They don't say them on the heads, but they do actually list them in the description being eight degrees for the 52, 12 for the 56 and nine for the 60. So for a, a player who would probably look at these clubs, you wouldn't be looking for really low bounces you will probably be looking for mid to high and these actually fit that category with those bounce options there the heads themselves as you can see they actually have forged feel stamped on them and that's because they're not a forged head they are a stainless steel head so something like your Callaway your Mizuno your Titleist would be an actual forged head as well these are stainless steel and that's one issue I think that you're going to find out a little bit later in the video with them now in terms of looks, they look nice when you get them in the hand. The grip, for me, looked like it was gonna feel a bit a bit naff, a bit tacky and horrible, but actually felt pretty good. Felt um, like a normal rubbery grip. It's not a Golf Pride or a Lamp King or anything like that. It hasn't actually got any marks on it, so I would imagine it's just a, a budget grip that comes from that provider, from the Texan, from whoever's making the Texan wedges. Um, good metal finish with them that look nice. That blacked out finish now is becoming very popular amongst all the premium bands and we're seeing it obviously filter into these cheaper wedges. In terms of design, the head shape looks pretty nice to be fair. They're not too, too cumbersome, they don't look too big, which when I've seen some cheaper models in the past, they look very sort of clumsy is a word I would use to describe them, but these they look pretty slick when you put them down behind the golf ball and when you're um, you know just having a look at them, they look pretty smart wedges. Starting out, what I did feel was that they, they felt a little bit harsher 
than what you would get from a forge wedge. Now, obviously, knowing that it isn't a forge wedge, I would expect that now, knowing that I've read a little bit about them. I'm thinking, oh, okay, that's, that's to be expected. If it is just stainless steel and it's not the soft forge metal, that's probably explaining why they do actually feel a little bit firmer. They also sound a little bit firmer as well when you do hit them. So if you were to buy them, and then use a, you know, a distance ball, a top flight or a slazinger, I would expect that they would feel pretty harsh off the club face. That would be one thing to bear in mind. Looking at some of the benefits of a cheap wedge, obviously, like I said at the start, you are getting three wedges for the price of one premium wedge. So for $49.99, you've got three wedges. If you go and buy a TaylorMade TM3, that's £149 for one wedge. And if you're gonna buy 52, 56, 60, all of a sudden, you're into that 450 mark as we're here, you've got that 49.99 price point and you've got your three wedges. Another benefit I would say is that at that 49 pound price point, I'm not gonna to be too worried if they don't last, if they only last me six months a year, let's say. If you're a weekend golfer who's playing once a week maybe, or you go to the range once a week, and you're not you know, avid, you've not really got into your golf at the moment, I would think, okay, well, you know what, for a year, they'll do me as I'm starting to get in. I wouldn't be too worried that I haven't got that forging um, on the head. I haven't got that milled face um, that we would see from these premium ones. I would be thinking, well, you know, they're gonna be a nice entry into the wedge market and let me decide whether I need three wedges or do I just want two wedges or is it 52, 56, 60 that I want? Do I actually want 50, 54, 58 or 52, 58? And it'll be a good way to sort of test yourself in that wedge market. The negative would be that you only get them in what they come in the package, 52, 56, 60. They only come in that bounce option. They're not custom fittable. One of the things that I did notice would be that wear of the wedge. I used the 56 for 10 shots out of the bunker and the gunmetal finish started to come away very quickly. Now I know this happens with other wedges, but it seemed to happen a little bit quicker with this one. I've had my Mizuno wedge for three months, I think it is now, and the sole is starting to go like this one, but the face doesn't look as, um, worn as this wedge did just after 10 shots. But again, that one wedge is 12 pounds 50 roughly, about $20, something like that, um, for one wedge. So if it wears quickly, it's not the end of the world. So it's like a negative, but a positive in the same spin. I've not spent hundreds of pounds on it, so I'm not expecting it to last forever and ever. Um, one of the other negatives is the performance. Do they perform like a normal wedge? So what I did to test that fact out was take the 60 degree wedge, head down to my sim, and I hit 10 shots with the 60 degree, and then I also put it up against my Mizuno T22 60 degree, that like I say, I've had for three months, to see how it would perform. Can it stop him? They work, they work. Interesting. Okay, 10 with the Mizzy. Ooh, 
that was a chunky monkey. L. Chunkingtons. Just shank that. That was different. Wow. More like it, Matthew. So that's 10 shots with each wedge there. 60 degree Texan and 60 degree Mizuno. Now, did it perform? The answer is yes and the answer is also no. When I buy a lob wedge, I wanna know that it's spinning. It's one club that when I'm around the greens, I wanna be having that control. I'm not looking for loads of distance. I obviously want the appropriate distance, but I wanna know that I've got the control when I'm in and around the greens. And what I actually found with the Texan wedge versus the Mizuno wedge, the Texan wedge actually spun a little bit more. Both of them spinning in the 10,000 mark, but the Texan getting 10,953 revs as where the Mizuno got 10,900, so 53 more for the Texan. So we're seeing that it's getting that spin. So when I was out chipping originally with the 56 and the 52, I noticed that there was that bite there. I was noticing that there was a little bit of check and control. So it's good to see that that was actually transpiring into the test that we did that. Now, Again, with the 56 wearing out quickly, how long will that last? Obviously my Mizuno there, I've used that for three months and it's still spinning up at the same rate as a brand new cheap wedge. Will that be the case for the Texan in three months time? I may have to have a look at that. One thing that I did see when I say it was a no, distance. And as I alluded to earlier, the stainless steel head. This is where the performance may dip ever so slightly. I hit some 52s as I got the wedges. I took them out onto the golf course and I also took them into the sim here and I was hitting some small pitches. And then I started hitting some longer shots with the 52 degree. And what I noticed is that it was dropping shorter in its carry distance than I would normally see. My 50 degree wedge carries 118 yards. So for the 52, I was expecting it to carry around about 110. But what I was actually seeing, it was closer to that 100 yard marker as I was actually hitting the shots, which then as I did that, made me question when I went into this um, 60 degree test, is this gonna fly as far? And what I actually ended up doing was setting the, um, the Foresight Sim at 75 yards for the Texan wedge and actually at 100 yards for my Mizuno one because I know my Mizuno one would fly 95. And what I can see from actually the test is that the ball speed dropped by nearly six miles per hour. And then the carry distance dropped by eight yards. So that's nearly one full club that I'm dropping from the Texan to the Mizuno. And I do think it is something to do with the stainless steel head. Now the Forge one of the Mizuno being a little bit softer, the way it's manufactured, they obviously spend more time research going into this and what they've been able to do is get the best performance out of it. The Texan obviously using cheaper materials the stainless steel head, the alloy steel shaft, the grip that isn't a Golf Pride or a Lampkin, does affect a little bit of performance compared to the premium wedge. But as we saw from spin rate, it was up there, like I say, will it last? But answering the question, are cheap wedges worth it? I would say yes. For a golfer who's getting into the game now, who wants to look at maybe exploring from just having a pitching wedge and a sand wedge in their set, if they want to try out a lob wedge, a gap wedge, maybe a 56 degree wedge, and just actually start to learn how to hit different shots with these clubs, I think they're a fantastic entry into that wedge market. Now, six months down the line, you might find that they need changing, but for 49 pounds or $69, does it really matter? Not really, because you've got three wedges, six months experience, and then you could maybe go into the next step up where you spend 150, 200 pounds, you know, $250 on three wedges instead of spending 450 pounds, about $700 on three wedges. So. Are cheap wedges worth it? Yes, as an entry into the game, but just beware 
because of some of the materials that are used on the cheaper ones. You're not going to get the top end performance, but you're going to get very close to it. So very interesting test that. And uh, overall, I was pretty impressed by them. So give them a go. You know, if you are looking just to get into that starter wedge market, there you go, have an explore, see what you can find out there. Also, I've got a video coming very soon where I'm taking a premium wedge that has been used for a long time and I'm gonna try and refurbish it to see if buying a cheap premium wedge and trying to refurb it is one way to get into the wedge market as well. And if you do like all these types of videos, make sure you check out one of the videos here about a cheap package set. See if you like it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.